Hello and welcome. My name is Matthew Markwit, and this is the 10th and final video of the Beginner's Guide to Construct 3. And in this video, we're going to talk about the shooting simple effect as opposed to the more complex bow effect we saw in the previous one. Now, as mentioned in the previous video, uh, this one is to save you on events. You can save up to six events by using the simple effect as opposed to the more complex effect seen in the previous one. But also, if you're not shooting a bow and arrow and you just want any kind of bullet, uh, even arrows in this case work too uh, you can do this mechanic so keep in mind the previous video does explain certain things uh, that are not going to be explained in this video such as destructible walls and hit points that actually starts at 27 minutes in if you're interested in doing that but just do the first part and then I'll remind you to go back to that part of the video to finish it up so that I don't basically repeat exactly the same thing now in this particular video we don't need to do a bow point or a bow line but we do need to create an arrow um, so I do have an arrow already in the scene, and I'm not going to recreate it simply because if I recreate it, I'm going to break some of the coding that I already have in here, right? But uh, you would create it by double-clicking, coming in here, going to sprite, adding the sprite up here, and then finding the arrow. So in the case of the Super Platformer Engine Assets bow, it would actually be number two uh that's the one that actually has the um the brown stem on it now i'm just going to alter my current one so that i don't mess up the stuff that's already going on here it actually um right here you can see I, I i still have this animation called flash this was from the previous video i did already delete it so i guess i don't really have to alter it but here it is this is basically what the arrow looks like by itself so you really just need one arrow by itself not doing anything now what you do want to do is add a bullet behavior which i've already done to this one also as we can see over here so once again if you click on behaviors add and then i just chose bullet um you won't see it again now or there it is um, bullet. Uh, once you add it, the only real difference between the, um, the the default numbers and the numbers that I changed was speed. So speed is set to 600. This can be totally controlled by you. You want to go faster, slower. It all depends on the size of your map. Make sure you play around with those numbers. Um, but that's how you get the uh, the bow effect or the arrow, I should say, uh, to shoot. Now on the player, <clears throat> and I've already done this also, and this was shown in the previous video, but just to reiterate, if you double-click on the player, and I've actually added two of them as I've been kind of fooling around here, so we can right-click and delete. Um, but on the shoot mechanic here, let me try that again. <clears throat> so we'll delete this off. Uh, on the character, we need to have a place where the arrow spawns from. So all you have to do is right-click. You can add a new image point, and then on the image point, right-click and rename it. In this particular case, I renamed it Arrow. And I set it at, if I click on it, you'll see right here, at X15 and Y11. You'll see it right here. Once you do that in the first frame, it only needs to be on shoot. Right click and then do apply to whole animation. And it will apply it to every one of the frames across. Okay, So that's important so that our arrow spawns in the right place. So remember, we have an origin point so that our animations and everything are working fine where the player lands, where the dust spawns from. But we also need another origin point, in this case one for arrow so that his arrow can shoot in the appropriate place wherever he's facing. Okay, so that's also important to do. Once again, I did show this in the last video, but this is just kind of a reiteration for this one in case you didn't watch the last video yet. Okay, so once you've done that, you also need to double-click in the scene and add, and then not in the object there, but I have this sprite here, and I can just delete that sprite. <coughs> Excuse me. If we double-click in the scene here, and scroll down to where it says input. Now, mouse doesn't exist anymore because I already added it up here, but you would double click add mouse, and this will allow you to, if you want, in my case I do, left click will shoot uh, for the player. So the arrow keys are to move around and jump, and then left click on the mouse is to shoot. If you want to have it so that the keyboard has the player shoot, then you don't need this mouse one. You can just set that up later as is, right? But I just threw that in there for that particular reason. So that's pretty much all you need to actually add to the scene before you're ready to go to do the simple effect. So let's go take a look at the event sheet. Now, I have this little section I called hit points. This is actually what I pulled from the previous video. If you actually scroll up here, I'll show you real quick. In the previous video, starting at 27 minutes in, right, I talk about this section, which is basically if you shoot an enemy and their hit points get to zero, they will die, but also will also make the arrow be destroyed and get these little effects and so on. Okay, the only difference, so if you go and follow along in that video, the only difference, don't add the arrow uh, that is sign active. That's it, because we don't have a sign on this arrow. 
Um, and you can see that both for dest destructible walls and for enemies. That's it. It's exactly the same thing. Otherwise, so follow the video, like I said before, from 27 minutes in to create this effect. Okay, but to actually get the arrow to shoot, and you can even see I posted it down here, right? Finished by adding these events in the last video, starting at 27 minutes in. All right, now, what we really need to do that is totally unique to this particular version, to the simple version now, is this section we see here. So let's do that, and we'll get the player uh, to shoot their mechanics right. So I'm going to minimize this hit points one. But as you can see there, I need that in there also so that I can destroy the enemies. And it also uses the arrow, so the arrow has to be created. Once again, I told you if I deleted the arrow, I would have messed this stuff up. So that's why I left it in without deleting the arrow. So let's just add the events necessary to do this. So this is also very similar to the last one, but you'll see some differences here. Once again, whatever you want to control the mouse, you know, or the, I shouldn't say the mouse, but the, the, the shooting by, I'm going to do mouse. Uh, this is where you'll do it. So I'll do mouse <clears throat> on click and we'll do left clicked and hit done. So that's default. That's good. What do we want to do? Well, what we want to do is we want the player right set the animation to shoot. So remember we have that shoot animation. So we'll go in there do it from the beginning right set that from the beginning i'm going to mush this over a little bit and then pull this back in doesn't mean that far out so we can see this so set the animation and then we're going to also add another one where in the system we set in this case a group so we're going to type in group here a group active we're actually going to deactivate the player movement group so as explained in the previous video also this is the only uh of the uh of the groups that needed to be created as we can see up here the player movement group the one that does all of this right where the players moving running jumping idle all those animations playing it's important that we deactivate this group when you're shooting so that you can jump and shoot and move and shoot you would not be able to do that if this was active so that's why it has to be in a group and uh, we're going to deactivate it now I'm going to have to reactivate it, of course, otherwise the player will be stuck in a shoot motion. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to skip this part and do this one next just for logical purposes. Uh, when I made these images, I didn't think about that, but it makes more sense to do this next, which is basically reactivating the player movement. So let's go in here, add event. We'll choose player, and now we're going to do on a finished animation. So we take a look at animations here on finished. Which one? Well, same thing, shoot, right? So we're going to type in shoot. We're going to hit done. So when the player is done with the finished animation, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to reactivate this group that we just deactivated so that we get all that functionality back. So we'll come in here and type in player movement, right? And there we go. Activated, leave default. And there we've just kind of inverted that part. So that part's important as far as getting that to go back. Okay, so now we'll do this part in the middle. And this part in the middle is basically meaning a couple frames in you want to shoot because he's pulling his arrow back and then he lets go. It'd be silly if the arrow shoots while he's pulling it back. So that's what we're really doing with this one. Uh, you won't need this necessarily, um, at least the animation part here, necessarily if you want to have it spawn immediately. If you want it to spawn immediately, we'll just leave the animation part out, but we'll leave the rest the same. So what we'll do is we'll have the player come in and uh, we'll do is uh, in this case right in the middle of an animation so while animation is playing which animation shoot all right so we'll have when the shoot animation is playing what do we want to do <clears throat> as i said before we'll do a sub uh, sub condition here at frame two so we'll add a or not sub condition but a sub event at frame two so we'll do player and we'll compare frame which frame? Frame 2, which is technically the third image in the animation because 0 counts as 1 frame, so 0, 1, then 2. And then we'll hit Done. Um, and uh, once again, you'll leave this out if you don't care to have it happen during a certain frame of an animation. And then lastly, we'll do Add, and then we'll do <clears throat> Add a uh, another condition here, and we'll set this one to be System Trigger Once. So we'll go in here and we'll type in Trigger, and they'll be Trigger Once while True. That's what we want there, and now we'll set it so that the player down here on these sub-events, not the, the main event here, but the sub-events here, we'll do the add action, and we'll do player, and they will spawn, so we'll start typing in spawn, so they'll spawn another object, which in case, obviously, will be the arrow, and uh, where do we want to spawn from? Well, remember, we, we made that arrow point, right, uh, that origin point called arrow, and that's what we're spawning for. Make sure that you put it in quotations and hit done. Okay, so it's going to spawn the arrow at that point two frames in. Okay, so there you go. So now what do we need to do? Pretty simple, right? Now we got to do it so that the arrow 
uh, reverses. I shouldn't say the arrow, but the bullet reverses um, because it could be whatever you're doing. In our case, it is an arrow. But I'm going to hit play real fast and show you. So if I'm shooting normally, you see it does, it does what it's supposed to and all that stuff with the enemy getting hit and dying. But if I shoot this way, right, it's shooting backwards. So we have to fix that, right? We, want, we don't want it to shoot the same way no matter which direction we're facing. Obviously, that's silly. So this last part fixes that. So we're going to come over here and we're going to go add event. And uh, we're going to do on arrow created. So we'll type in created. So when the arrow is created, right, and then we're going to uh, add a sub-event here. So we're going to add a sub-event in this case when the player is mirrored, right? So it only matters when the player is mirrored. So we'll start typing in mirrored, okay, because otherwise it just plays everything normally. So if the player is mirrored, what we want to do is we need to add an action, okay, and as we can see over here where we set the bullet angle. Now you can set... You know, so we'll choose angle here, but you can set the angle of the object to be flipped, but that doesn't work in this case. It kind of messes it up. We're going to set the bullet angle. So we're going to start typing in angle, and you'll see that there's um, a, t a couple of angles, ones that you can set the, um, the angle of motion for the bullet and then just set angle in general. Remember, we want to choose set angle of motion, and we're going to change that to 180. Okay, so we set that to 180. And then the last thing we need to do um, <clears throat> in this case is we want the arrows to be destroyed so they don't keep go moving in the, the world forever, eternally. So what we're going to have is we're going to have the arrow get destroyed. So we'll click on arrow <clears throat> and then on collision with. So we'll choose on collision with and we'll choose the tile map, right? So the walls and the floors and such, right? And we'll hit done. So when it touches that, it will be destroyed. So we'll choose arrow is destroyed. Start typing in destroyed. <clears throat> and actually, let's do an or condition here, too, so that it also will do an or block, like right-click and do an or block. And now we're going to add another condition. So we'll go add another condition. And in this case, what we're going to do is when arrow is outside layout. So we can start typing in layout. So whether it goes outside the layout, because otherwise you can, like, shoot, and it goes entirely across the entire map, you know, whatever, <coughs> and then kind of outside the world and just keep going. Once again, we want to make sure that that's also happening. So whether it hits the tile map or it hits the layout, it doesn't really matter. Whatever one happens first, destroy the arrow. All right, so now if I hit play, we should finally have our working thing. We can shoot our arrows, kills the enemy, shoot the other way, and you see the arrows go like that, and when they hit the wall, they get destroyed. Okay, so that's exactly what we needed. Hopefully, once again, this video helped. This entire series helped you a lot. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Right, or just ask me in class. And thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.